Hello, I'm Tom Nevels, Professional Development Manager for a Schools of North Carolina, and I'd like to welcome you to the Arts Are For Life online virtual professional development series. This series is a collaboration between the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, the North Carolina Arts Council, and a Schools of North Carolina. Welcome to Curtain Up, Light the Lights, the third of our four arts integration modules in this series. I'm Tom Nevels, Professional Development Manager for a Schools of North Carolina, and I'm happy to be your host for this module. In each of the four arts integration modules, we will consider arts integration in general, and then zoom in on one specific art form, for examples, thinking, and resources. In this module, we'll be looking at theater arts integration. As you view this module, you may need to adjust your computer's volume for the various video segments of the module. You can always pause the video and rewind if you've missed something or need a sound adjustment. Before we go behind the scenes of theater integration, we will refresh our memory of the definition of arts integration. We will also take a look at some of the benefits and whys of arts integration and of theater integration in particular. Then we will take some time to view theater integration in action and unpack examples to look for standards, theater strategies, and integrations that make sense. We'll then wrap the module with resources for your own practice. Let's get started by hearing what a few teachers and students who have experienced the benefits of arts integration have to say. Arts integrated lesson would be, it would be hard to just determine whether it was a visual arts lesson or a writing lesson because they're so intertwined. We're really looking for a lot of student engagement, um, a lot of students collaborating, working together, talking, and I think learning through the arts creates a lot of conversation, and um, I think that's one of the most important things that comes away from the arts program is the conversation that students have with one another. are always striving for internationally minded, creative students. And so a child who finds their niche, who finds their place, who discovers that they have a voice and that it has a reason, it has a purpose, is such a huge part of what we want for the world. And the fact that we have these classes and these opportunities and that students make those daily artistic connections every day is such a powerful force. We need more of it, definitely in our schools. I'm a winner. Like you mean it. I'm a winner. Again. I'm a winner. In module two, Get On Your Feet, we took a closer look at the definition of arts integration. If you've not already viewed Module 2, we invite you to pause this video now and go back and view that module for a more in-depth introduction to arts integration. For the purposes of this module, we'll use this definition from a Schools. Arts integration is the bringing together of arts and non-arts standards and objectives to create hands-on, experiential, connected, and meaningful learning experiences. True arts integration values both the arts and non-art standards as necessary to the learning experience. Pause the video here to consider where you may already be using the arts in your own classroom and if you feel it meets the definition of arts integration. Be sure to support your position with examples from your practice. If you're watching with a colleague, take a few moments to compare your answers. Press play when you're ready to start the video again. This module is focused specifically on theater arts integration. Theater arts is the branch of the performing arts which conveys a story through performance. Performers called actors bring the story to life by embodying various characters and presenting the story in front of an audience. In this module, we'll focus mostly on a variety of theater used often in classrooms called creative drama. 
Creative drama is an improvisational, process-centered teaching tool that utilizes children's natural tendency to learn through play. Participants are guided by a leader to imagine, enact, and reflect upon experiences through role play, improvisation, pantomime, movement, and sound. Here is a short list of the further benefits of theater education from the American Alliance for Theater and Education. Numerous studies have demonstrated a correlation between drama involvement and academic achievement. In addition to having higher standardized test scores than their peers who do not experience the arts, students who participate in drama often experience improved reading comprehension, maintain better attendance records, and stay generally more engaged in school than their non-arts counterparts. Schools with arts integrated programs, even in low income areas, report high academic achievement. Now that you know what theater arts integration is and its benefits, where do you begin? The development of arts integrated lessons begins with the North Carolina state standards or the state standards for your own state if you aren't viewing from North Carolina for both arts and non-arts content. Here are some questions to guide your integrated planning. One, what do you want students to know and be able to do? Two, what are the standards that you wish to cover? Three, what disciplines will be integrated? In this case, theater arts. Four, what learning experiences will allow all students to learn in creative and engaging ways? And five, assessment. How will students be able to demonstrate what they know? Let's take a look at an example from a sixth grade middle school classroom where students are performing a culminating activity where they have researched and prepared for their Greek mythology unit. I teach sixth grade social studies, prehistoric time through ancient civilizations all the way up to the Roman Empire. We're always looking for opportunities to integrate uh, arts into our curriculum. Today's project was a culminating activity for the entire unit. This is a Getty lesson on Greek mythology. Well, the first step in the unit is to introduce students to Greek and Roman mythologies and the mythological stories so they can get to know some of the gods and the goddesses. Once they have some exposure to the stories, they started writing a script. They create a talk show or a courtroom drama based on those gods and their mythological stories and then create props and costumes, especially with the attributes. It was a requirement that they, if they're a god or goddess on stage, they had to have that god or goddess's attribute with them. We are gathered here today to discuss the kidnapping of Persephone <laughs> by Hades. <laughs> Do. Would the defendant please tell his side of the story? It was dark and gloomy in the underworld like usual. I was feeding my hellhounds and suddenly I saw the most beautiful woman picking flowers in the meadow and I vowed to make her my wife. When we were in my palace, I asked her if she was hungry. She said she must go home. I told her to take a pomegranate and she left. When the students have to write dialogue and create context for that dialogue as a specific mythological character, it gives these students an opportunity to own the learning themselves. We had to work the hardest on the script. We had to use the correct grammar, because I don't think the gods knew what grammar was back then. Try to add facts so they would learn stuff, the students would learn stuff, while they're being entertained. For example, Hades. Since he lives by himself in the underworld, we figured that he would probably be like mean and cruel. If you are done, Let's hear Persephone's side of the story. So, I'm Persephone. You notice when you see a crown or a pomegranate? I'm the goddess of vegetation. I was in a meadow and this ugly black figure grabbed me. Then he took me to the underworld and made me eat six pomegranate seeds. I object! That did not happen, you no good pomegranate face. To assess the performances today, I'm focusing on first that the students include god and goddess attributes. 
not only are they making props for those gods or goddesses, but they're including them in the script, which was a requirement. Do any of you have evidence to support your cases? I have evidence that will turn this case around. Hurry up, we don't have all day. Here are the six pomegranate seeds that Persephone ate in the underworld. Let me see that now! That's the great hook with Greek mythology. Once they see the drama, they really get into the material. So I focus them on drama. I tell them, when you're presenting, think about what you would want to see in terms of good drama. Has the jury reached a verdict? Yes. On the account of Hades kidnapping Persephone, we find him guilty. On the account of Hades forcing Persephone to stay in the underworld, we find him not guilty. Hades, you have to pay $1,200 for kidnapping of Persephone. Yeah. For seven, you have to stay in the underworld six months out of the year, every year, Boo. with Hades. Case closed! I was proud of my students and their culminating activities today. Synthesizing that information to create something new, it's a terrific example that they've learned what the unit set out to teach them. The thing I like best about teaching this unit is it puts the ownership of the learning on the students and anytime I can make the students responsible for what they're learning, they're gonna learn better. Jingle, 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 dee dee. Jingle, 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 got away is a real thing. Yeah. Viewing this student presentation provides a great way to consider how the theater arts and social studies standards were blended together to create an engaging standards-based lesson and an arts-enriched assessment of learning. In a moment, you will pause the video again and open a second browser window to pull up the North Carolina state standards or the standards for your own state if you aren't viewing from North Carolina. For a more detailed introduction to the North Carolina state standards in the arts and how they can be used by every teacher, please view the first module in this series, Module 1, Double Standards. To access the North Carolina state standards, Point your browser to www.ncpublicschools.org and click the K-12 curriculum button at the top left of the menu underneath the page banner. On the curriculum page, use the link shown in the menu on the left to navigate to the subject area desired. Then, use the links in the center of the page to select the desired grade level. Take some time to find the 6th grade arts and non-art standards that you think were being used in this video. What standards did you think were being addressed in the video? Which were theater art standards? Which were social studies standards? Were both standards necessary to the learning experience? If you're watching with a colleague, take a few moments to compare your answers. Pause the video now to do some research and press play when you're ready to continue. Let's begin with the sixth grade social studies or non-art standards from the culture strand. What standards did you think were being addressed in the example? In clarifying objective 6C1.1, the student needs to understand that the beliefs and values of a civilization are expressed through its art. By using images of ancient Greek statuary from the Getty Museum website, this teacher found a way to engage the students with the mythologies that he wanted them to learn. In clarifying Objective 6C 1.2, the student needs to understand that people may use religion and philosophy in order to explain their ideas about human nature and the universe. By having the students role play these myths, they are learning how the ancient Greeks thought nature worked. In the case of Persephone, how the seasons came to be and changed. Let's take a look at the sixth grade theater arts standards in the communication strand. What standards did you think were being addressed in this video? Clarifying Objective 6C 1.1 asks students to use their own judgments about physical movement and voice to appropriately communicate ideas and feelings. 
Clarifying Objective 6C 1.3 has students turning dialogue and concepts from the stories they have read into performable scripts. Additionally, this example emphasized the use of character props, such as Zeus's lightning bolt, to show attributes of each god and goddess. Theater art standards include an aesthetics strand that addresses production values such as sets, lights, costumes, props, etc. Clarifying Objective 6 AE 1.2 asks students to use these components to support both formal or informal presentations. In your research, you may have also noticed that the theater art standards also have a culture strand. At each grade level, these standards are directly aligned with the social studies standards. With a little more research and instruction into the performing style of the Greeks and a few notes on audience etiquette, this example could also have covered several of these objectives as well. Now think back to the first part of our definition of arts integration. As you read it, Think to yourself how the example we just saw fits the definition. Arts integration is the bringing together of arts and non-art standards and objectives to create hands-on, experiential, connected, and meaningful learning experiences. Now, take a moment to consider the standards that you teach. Which of them might benefit from being more hands-on, experiential, or connected? In your investigation, did you see any theater art standards that could connect to your standards? Pause the video now to research, think, make necessary notes, and discuss. Press play when you're ready to continue. Before we move on, a brief note about what we at a schools call informances. The example we just analyzed was a sample of an informance. Informances are presentations of work as a natural outcome of study, which emphasize the process of learning over the final product. Informances are usually informal within the classroom and may be presented to a wide variety of audiences, from fellow students to other classes, parents, and the community. Again, the learning experience is the focus of these presentations, even though a final product may be produced. These experiences provide opportunities to define the role of performers and audience members, to teach students to respond to and critique theatrical performances appropriately, and help children to build confidence and pride in their work. What types of assessment information about the social studies and theater content might you gather as the teacher from these student products? What types of feedback could students give to each other that is specific to each. Assessing the depth of student learning and understanding for each content area is an important part of integrated work. Pause the video now to reflect on how you could use the theater arts strategies we have discussed to allow students to show what they know. Now, let's learn a few theater strategies that integrate well across subject areas and the definition of each. Most of the theater techniques you will see demonstrated in this module are founded on the concept of role play, which is a natural form of play for children. Legendary acting teacher Konstantin Stanislavski described the concept as the magic if. The magic if asks the student to begin the work by asking, what would I do if I were in these circumstances? By using the magic if, the student is granting themselves permission to believe in the same way they believe a doll is real or that they are really Tarzan. The answer to this simple question can be a springboard to creativity and inspiration. An additional tenet utilized in the strategy shown is the concept of yes and. Yes and, thinking, is a rule of thumb in improvisational comedy that suggests that a participant should accept what another participant has stated, yes, 
and then expand on that line of thinking. And. Outside of theater, it is used as a principle that improves the effectiveness of the brainstorming process, fosters effective communication, and encourages the free sharing of ideas. More information on these concepts, as well as further resources on other information contained within this module, can be found on the NC DPI Arts Education Wikispace. Earlier, we introduced the genre of theater arts known as creative drama. In just a moment, we'll continue exploring some creative drama strategies. It's important to remember that these are not primarily concerned with teaching theater skills, although this may, of course, occur. The purpose of creative drama is to use the natural dramatic impulse to facilitate learning in an unlimited number of fields and areas. Here's a list of creative drama strategies which are informal, process-centered, and often side-coached or guided by a leader. Tableau, a group of motionless performers arranged similarly to statues representing a scene. Pantomime, nonverbal performance relied on gesture, facial expression, and movement to enact material. Improvisation. The spontaneous use of body, voice, and mind to explore, create, or present theater without a script or prior planning. Storytelling. Sharing stories, sometimes with rehearsed theatrical enhancement. And puppetry. Form of the art involving the manipulation and voicing of puppets, typically by either strings or hand. Creative drama differs from formal theater production, which is fully prepared for a public audience with rehearsals and more fully produced aesthetic elements, such as sets and costumes. Now that you're familiar with a few types of theater strategies and their definitions, let's look at another video. This example is from a fourth grade integrated science lesson. Be on the lookout for strategies that are being used. My name is Jeff Landon, and I'm your guest instructor for this first hour. All right, are you ready to be my guest student? Yes! Excellent. When I say jelly, everyone return to your seats by sneaking. Jelly. Now, you understand mime a little bit now? Yes. And stillness a little bit now? Yes. Now let's start using this mime to review what we know about erosion. Wind erosion makes things look like this. Right? You've seen these kind of pictures? Yeah. Now you tell me, look at this picture, how did this end up like this with wind erosion? How, what process happened? What happened in this? Talk to me, Savier. It combined with uh, lots of rocks that made a big hole entire canyon. That's right. And then it makes holes in the rocks. It carves the rocks, right? Wind erosion. So when water moves soil and things from one spot to another, anybody have an idea what this picture is going to look like? What's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? I think this could be like, probably like a big hole in the bottom where the water is just so clear. OK, what do you think? A very river with things inside it. Water erosion. Rivers, streams, right? And you're right, lakes, right? Lake is a body of water, and then the water flows out of it. And as the water flows, it cuts a channel. 
right? That's what we're looking at here. This is just a little bit of erosion in a field. Cool? Okay, good. Here's one more. Volcano, volcano. <laughs> oh, tell me about it, Jameson. A volcano versus a mountain or a hill. Typically, uh, particles having a crater or vent through which lava rock fragments, hot vapor, and gas are being or have been erupted from the Earth's crust. And it looks like this. Oh, awesome. Very cool and awesome, right? to tell you something to make with everybody in your group all right yeah. and it works like this I will say the name of the object or thing your job will be with everybody in your group working together you will make this object out of your bodies let's try a simple one first all right a bowl of cereal with your partners, show me you are all one big bowl of cereal. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Solid and still. Let me see it. Okay, so you're the cereal? Yeah. Okay, good. What are you, Cocoa Puffs or? Cheerios. Cheerios. Okay, good. good. Now, are you the are you the cereal or the spoon? The cereal. Are you Crazy Pebbles? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, everybody, stand up where you are. Nicely done. Now, let's think about our erosion. If you are going to show erosion, sometimes you would show the results of the erosion by being still, and sometimes you might show the process. Do you want to do the process or the result, the stillness? The process. How many people want to do process? Okay, that means you will not be solid. You'll be moving a little bit, right, to show the process that we vote. Because erosion is a process, and that's what we're going to show. And you guys know these, right? Okay. I will, when I tell you which one I want you to do, and I'm going to do them out of order, I will tell you what it is, talk to each other, work it out so everybody's fitting in, helping to show the picture. You ready? And then do it. You have 10 seconds to get that done. Set it up. Set it up. Talk to each other. Bing, 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 bing. Good, good, good. I like that. I like that. Good. You guys ready? Okay, pause. Let's start over here this time. You guys ready? Show me. Everybody, let's look at this process. Wind erosion, go. Show me. Nice. Oh, good. And you wore him down. Excellently done. Let's see this one. Wind erosion. <laughs> good, good. Good. Ready for another one? Which one is this? Water erosion. Water erosion. Oh, you guys ready? All right, we're starting over here. Oh, I love this choice. Water erosion. Go. Go, water. Oh, I'm going to you probably don't want to do this one, do you? You don't want, you don't want, to, do, you want to do this one? Okay, work it out. You're going, to do show, you're going to show us volcanic erosion without a sound. Show me the action. You ready? And go. And then what happens? Then what happens? The lava comes out. Show me. Show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we are we are left with our own. Brilliant!
Viewing this integrated lesson as it is being taught provides a great way to consider how the theater arts and science standards were blended together to create an engaging, creative, and standards rich experience for the learners. Take some time to consider the creative drama strategies you think were being used in this example. Which strategies were being used? How could you tell? Why do you think the teacher selected these particular strategies? Pause the video now to do some thinking and or discussion and press play when you're ready to continue. Let's take a moment to revisit our list of creative drama strategies. From the example you just viewed, did you see examples of pantomime and improvisation? Did you also notice either of the foundational concepts of the magic if or yes and at work here? The instructor gave the students lots of opportunities to act as if they were in a given set of circumstances. These opportunities were sequenced intentionally and provided the scaffolding needed for students to go for portraying everyday objects, such as a bowl of cereal, to the more abstract objects and processes associated with erosion, such as wind, water, gravity, rocks, and soil. The instructor also used the concept of yes and in order to activate the students' movements and imaginations. You heard him repeat the phrase, show me, often. This is an example of side coaching, where teachers offer directions and guidance throughout a creative drama exercise. The phrase, show me, helps to reduce talking and increase movement. The instructor accepted each and every portrayal as valid, but asked clarifying questions of the students, followed up with, show me, making effective use of the yes and approach. Now think back to the second part of our definition of arts integration. As you read it, think to yourself how the example we just saw fits the definition. True arts integration values both the arts and non-arts standards as necessary to the learning experience. Take a moment to pause and reflect about the idea of incorporating theater arts in your classroom. What standards that you teach would pair well with the integration strategies shown in the video? What about the other strategies listed? Pause the video now to do some thinking and or discussion and press play when you're ready to continue. In Module 5, Fascinating Rhythms, we spoke more about the continuum of arts experiences that can be offered to students. If you've not already viewed Module 5, we invite you to pause this video now and to go back and view that module for a more in-depth discussion of that continuum. From arts exposure to arts education to arts integration, there are many valid and valuable ways to include the arts in your curriculum. In this next example, we'll be exploring one way to make sure arts integrations are authentic and meaningful. I've asked teachers several times to attempt to categorize terms and concepts by subject, and for some reason, they just can't seem to do it. In this example, all of the visual art terms were printed on one color card. What went wrong? The fact is, nothing went wrong. Vocabulary and concepts do not truly belong to any one subject area. They are all interconnected in a comprehensive education which includes the arts. When teachers find authentic arts integration opportunities, they are able to teach multiple concepts simultaneously and the lesson flows naturally as both standards are necessary for the learning experience. Take a look at this cloud of vocabulary words. What words do you see that connect to your curriculum area? What words do you see that could connect to multiple curricular areas? For the ELA teacher, the words character and setting may have grabbed your attention. For the social studies teacher, it may have been culture or traditions. For the math teacher, expression and sequence. For science, 
problem and solution might have caught your eye. Counselors may have chosen expression or etiquette, PE and dance, movement and performance, visual art teachers, interpretation and critique. Would it surprise you to learn that these are all terms drawn from the K-6 North Carolina Theater Arts Standards? Let's take a look at how the ELA teacher might use the vocabulary they spotted to begin constructing a theater integrated lesson. A quick thoughtful keyword search of the third grade North Carolina Theater Arts and English Language Arts Standards produces the following result for the term character. A bit of further investigation yields a set of several standards that are complementary to each other. In the Theater Art Standards Communication Strand, Objective 2C1.1 reads, Use nonverbal expression to communicate elements of characterization, including age and physicality. Objective 2C1.2, Use vocal variety and animation to create distinct voices for characters. Objective 2C2.2, interpret stories from previously read texts by acting them out. In the English Language Arts Standards Reading Literature Strand, Objective RL2.2 reads, recount events from familiar stories from diverse cultures. Objective RL2.3, identify the actions of the character in a story. And RL2.6, identify the speakers in a dialogue. Here's how these standards were used in an integrated lesson plan about stock characters. A stock character is a stereotypical fictional character whom audience recognize from frequent recurrences in literature. As it turns out, many of our modern stock characters in comedy can be traced back to an improvised kind of popular comedy in Italian theaters in the 16th through 18th centuries called Commedia dell'arte. Working with the students, the teacher introduced each type of Commedia stock character and filled in a character chart with contemporary examples of each, including characteristic phrases and gestures, which the Italians referred to as Lazzi. Then, the teacher divided the students into small groups of three or four. Each group received a scenario, or scene summary, which served as the framework for a short improvisation. Students were guided to answer the questions, how do you show your character with your voice and body? How will the audience know what you want, need, or feel? What is the beginning, middle, and end of the story? How will you close the story? Be very sure. Student groups took turns portraying their many scenarios. The teacher asked the students in the audience to identify characters and to justify their choices using information from the character chart. Playing the overtop stock characters was a great way to introduce the concept of character and improvisation. Sticking to the Lazzi, the stock gestures and phrases, helped provide structure. The miniature nature of the scenarios provided further structure in which the students could explore. A few other suggestions for identifying and portraying characters include improvised character interviews, aka hot seat, where questions can come from other characters, the modern audience, or the teacher. An improvised daytime talk show, again with the guest interacting with the audience and each other. The teacher in role as host guides the improvisation. Character journal entries, a great way to get the wants and needs of a character and a great source of writing practice. Character mixtapes or playlists, for the rhythmic or musical learner, this can be a great way to encourage speaking and listening, as well as a way to frame a monologue or provide mood to a scene reading or performance. Although initial ideas for this arts integration may have stemmed from vocabulary, it's important to remember that we took the idea back to the standards. The best instruction, whether arts integrated or not, always begins with the standards. In just a moment, you will be asked to pull some vocabulary words from this list and return to the standards to see where there might be an additional opportunity for theater arts integration in your classroom. You may wish to return to this slide and pause the video to help you with this task. Take a moment to find theater vocabulary that might connect to the content that you teach. 
Return to the standards and do some investigation. Locate theater standards that complement your content standards. Brainstorm how you would use this pairing in an integrated lesson to create a hands-on, experiential, connected, and meaningful learning experience. Pause the video now to do some research and or discussing, and press play when you're ready to continue. Now think about how the student experience in this lesson was similar to and different from the sample videos we viewed earlier. As you can see, integrated experiences can be used as assessment of learning either prior to engaging in new content or as new content is being learned and explored. It can also be used as a final assessment of learning. Remember also that there is a continuum of arts integration that allows entry points for all types of teachers. It's important to note that all of our examples took place in a non-arts classroom. Hopefully through this exploration, you have gained a deeper understanding of what arts integration is and how to plan theater arts integrated lessons in your classroom. Let's review the information we've covered about theater arts integration in this module. Firstly, you've learned to start with the standards. Try to find one arts and one non-arts objective that complement each other. Next, we learned about a few creative drama strategies you can use that integrate well across disciplines. And finally, we learned to use the power of vocabulary to help create integrations that make sense. We thank you for participating in the Arts Are For Life Virtual Professional Development Series. This series is a collaboration between the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, the North Carolina Arts Council, and A-plus Schools of North Carolina. This concludes the module.